From the Classic 107 Studios in downtown Winnipeg, 107 Live for Birchwood Jaguar, the art of performance. And so for Birchwood Jaguar 107 Live on this Monday, September 25th, very fortunate to have in the studio with us uh, cellist Ariel Barnes. And he's in town to perform with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. He's kind of back by popular demand. He's been here before with them, and he was so beloved that we said we got to bring him back. So here he is again uh, to have a conversation. Again, he's in town to perform with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. We're really happy to have him in the studio. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. So I was just asking you off air if you'd been... You, last time you were here, you just had the interview. There was no performance That's right. element yeah. to it. So we're going to have... A couple little songs, or songs, pieces of music, if I get that correctly, in the classical realm. Um, and then we'll have a conversation. So you're going to play us something uh, right off the top. What do you got? Absolutely. This is a prelude from Bach's solo suite in C major. Okay. Cellist Ariel Barnes. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> nice way to start the morning for sure. It's That's pretty it. early. <laughs> <laughs> pretty early, absolutely. Yeah. Pretty early to. Uh, I'm going to swing you in closer to the mic so we yeah, can. Uh, absolutely. All right, here he comes. Okay, so I've got in the studio a cellist Ariel Barnes. He's in in town to perform with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. He's actually kicking off their concert season uh, tomorrow night. Not playing Bach, but uh, he's going to be playing Haydn and uh, other music as well. So. 
thank you again for coming in this morning. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, your background. I know that if in case people didn't hear the first interview with you, tell us about uh, your background with the cello. Sure. I, I started playing at a very young age string instruments. Uh, I was born into a family of musicians. Uh, my mother, a, a violinist, and my father, a composer. Um, and in the house, I had, uh, you know, I had string music, string players all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I started playing the violin at the age of two. And as the story goes, I, I was transfixed with a cellist in our living room at the age of three. And uh, I begged for an instrument for the next two years and <laughs> finally got one when I was five. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my mom said, uh, you play till you're 16 and you carry it yourself. That was the deal. Mm. And uh, I think uh, many things transpired throughout those 11 years. Um, but uh, I feel very fortunate to have come out the other end with a... Um, an absolutely beautiful relationship with the instrument and with music and uh, it's my life's passion so that's how things began um, I studied with many many different people uh, growing up um, unlike some who would stick with one or two teachers I had a, a wide variety of influences um, which I'm also very grateful for mm -hmm. um, went to school in Michigan went to school in Toronto um, went to the, the the big summer festivals in Canada like the BAMP Center for the Arts had really transformative experiences there also uh, the Center of the Arts at Mount Orford, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Interesting, yeah. because, I mean, you knew from a young age that you wanted to be involved in music. A lot of people yeah. when they're younger just really have no sense of what they want to do, but uh, but uh, obviously from a young age you knew you wanted to be a musician. Yeah. Um, was there ever a time along the way that you thought maybe you'd go a different direction? Or Yeah, that's, yeah? yeah absolutely. Uh, when I was a teenager, it, it was almost, uh, I felt like it was almost a given that I would be a musician. Mm -hmm. It just kind of was was a, my natural path. Um, but uh, a little bit later, I started to think that I might want to get involved in uh, kinesiology. I was also a, a, a dedicated athlete when I was younger. And uh, I started to really get involved in the, so, you know, in, in understanding the mechanics of the body um, and understanding injury rehabilitation. Mm. And uh, I thought that might be a road I'd like to go. Um, and I also loved riding boards. I uh, loved skateboarding, snowboarding, um, still a dream of mine to be surfing well one day, uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, but really music yeah. is where my natural passion and inclination and talents were lying. And, and I'm really glad I stuck with it. Interesting. Cause I've seen, uh, I've seen people describe your, when you were playing live as almost like an athletic performance, very invigorated and lots of energy and movement and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you think that your background in sports and kinesiology has kind of attributed to that or is just more of a natural I think that I've always been a, a sort of a physically engaged performer, but but yeah, I wouldn't doubt that it does uh, play a role. I mean, I think, mm -hmm. you know, everything we do ends up being kind of a culmination of all our experiences, especially mm -hmm. if you're involved in some kind of a performance art and you're trying to draw on your life experience. And, and there's no doubt that, you know, for example, spending years on, on the football field, you know, um, running and, and mm -hmm. breathing heavily and, and hitting, tackling, you know, chasing, all those sorts of things also come into play. There's a real uh, visceral connection with the body and um, with emotions that you feel in those moments that I absolutely transmit through my music making. Mm -hmm. So yeah. w w what did you play? What position? Football. Oh, I was a, a tight end and a linebacker. Tight end and a linebacker. Yeah. And you came through with no major injuries. That's a good thing. That's right. <laughs> and you got out <laughs> while you could. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I almost went to college to play ball, but I, wow. I chose music. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. you know, you, you spent many, many years in Vancouver, and yeah. I think that's how people associate you as being with the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra. Tell us, yeah. tell us a bit about your experience there and where you're at now. Vancouver um, is, a, is a dear home for me. I spent a lot of years there, and I, I grew tremendously... Uh, as a person and as an artist in that city. Uh, there's an incredible community. Um, actually, most importantly for me, an incredible uh, um, community of composers. So there's a lot of contemporary music going on there. I really discovered my love for creating new music in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. My time with the Vancouver Symphony was incredibly fruitful. Um, I learned a, a tremendous amount as well. Um, love playing in the Orpheum, uh, in the Orpheum Theater very, very much. It's a beloved room for me. Um, and uh, it had long been a, a dream of mine to to work and live in Europe, to learn languages, to touch different cultures, to to be to, to actually get closer to, to the root of a lot of the historic music mm -hmm. um, that we play. Uh, and so I decided to make that transition now because I realized this was the time in life to do it. Um, I, I was ready, and uh, the circumstances were right. So I relocated to Germany and uh, 
I've only been there for six months, but very excited about building my new life there. And what are your plans while in Germany? When you say building a new life, do you mean doing more, a lot more solo concerts, being more of a soloist, that kind of stuff? Or? In, indeed, yeah, yeah. Um, kind of both. I've taken a position as a solo cellist in the Nuremberger Symphoniker. Um, I, have, uh, I have aspirations to be teaching. I love to teach. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great passion of mine. Um, I would like to be teaching and absolutely playing more solo concerts. Uh, I recently entered my first international competition and was successful. And I hope that that also helps me, you know, procure more engagements and or, mm -hmm. you know, engage with promoters and presenters in a, in a different way overseas. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, music you're going to be performing tomorrow night. Uh, I should mention again, Ariel Barnes is in the studio this morning. He is performing tomorrow night with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. And uh, let's talk about Haydn. You're doing Haydn and you're yeah. also doing, you're doing the Michael Osterley, correct? Michael Osterley, the Iron let, let, Okay. Haydn is the you know, the, st the staple. Haydn yeah. is the staple. So Absolutely. tell us briefly about that, but I'm really kind of curious about this Iron Man thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one should be. Yeah, um, yeah the Haydn Concerti, the, the, there's two of them, one in C major, one in D major. And the last one time I was here, I played the D major concerto. Mm -hmm. uh, the C major was, uh, is, is actually, it's actually my favorite uh, of the two. Um, this, this piece was lost until 1961 and discovered in Prague and was written earlier than the D major. Mm -hmm. um, you know, full of radiant joy uh, and uh, effervescent energy. Um, second movement's incredibly a poetic adagio, very, very beautiful. Um, and uh, I like to approach this music uh, in more of a sort of Baroque slash classical style. I kind of, um, I, I've sort of tailored my approach in the last several years to a, to a sound that I think is, caters more to that time period. Um, and, um, and I'm really looking forward to playing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, full, it's full of vivacious energy. Um, and, and Michael Osterley's Iron Man is, uh, is a totally different story, mm -hmm. um, but I think has um, a connection with the Haydn in the sense that um, the textures and the harmony is all very clear. There's something about it that is a very uh, translucent, e easily understandable quality in the construction of the music um, and also in the expression like it's just you really understand what's being said uh, as opposed to some contemporary music which might be a little more intellectual or might mm -hmm. uh, might be more convoluted to understand you might want to listen to two or three times before you really start to absorb it this is music that grabs you immediately from the heart from the mm -hmm. stomach mm -hmm. um, with a very interesting uh, collection of historic ideas behind it basically centered around the Iron Age and the development of iron and how that's uh, shaped uh, the values of our current technological society. Yeah, for good and good and bad. <laughs> for good and bad, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And all those things are, are expressed in the music, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Have you played it before? No, this would be my first time playing first the time Iron playing Man. It. Yeah. Wow. And, and he, uh, Michael wrote this piece for the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra and yeah. Yegor Jajkov back in uh, 2005, it was premiered, um, and then played again in 2009. And he's reconceived the work uh, for us, uh, for this concert and for our tour and recording project. And he, he's rearranged it. He's pared down the instrumentation uh, and he's kind of distilled it um, in a way as he was expressing to me yesterday um, uh, in such a way that he feels that it's actually more classical. And he scored it for exactly the same group that we play with the Haydn. So I think it'll be very curious for audience members to hear uh, a great lit piece of literature from the classical period, and then a great modern concerto that is written for exactly the same instrumentation, hmm. but is a completely different sound world. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Should be a fun show. Yeah. Um, Ariel Barnes is in the studio. He's performing tomorrow night uh, with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. And since it's a Birchwood Jaguar 107 Live, we're going to ask you to do one more uh, piece for us. Yeah, before can do. we. Uh, can you can do. you can do it now. Your fingers are all warmed up. Wow, they got cold You've had again. your coffee. They got cold again. Warm Hold them that on the coffee, coffee. Warm them on the coffee. <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> and I'll uh, I'll give you the details as to how you can get uh, tickets in a few minutes. Again, uh, tomorrow night at seven thirty, Westminster United Church is going to be uh, Ariel Barnes and the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. Once again, here is cellist Ariel Barnes. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you very much, Ariel. Thank it's you, a Michael. pleasure to have you here. Have fun tomorrow night. Enjoy the rest of your stay in Winnipeg, and we're Thank happy you. to have you back here and yeah. at, back at our studios yeah, as thanks, well. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Sure. It's a great pleasure. Appreciate you coming in this morning with your cello. Yeah, I know it's kind of early, so I. No, it's a nice way to warm up into the day. Nice way to warm up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not going back to bed. You know? No, no, he's awake for <laughs> Go the to day. rehearsal now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I've been in conversation with Ariel Barnes. He's in town to perform tomorrow night with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra, doing the music of Haydn, Michael Osterley, Mozart, and more. Uh, you can get tickets at uh, go to check out their website, themco.ca. Uh, you can also get them Organic Planet, McNally Robinson Western Cultural Center to uh, go and have a, a fantastic. Uh, performance for uh, Ariel Barnes tomorrow night in the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. 107 Live is Classic 107's intimate concert series brought to you by Birchwood Jaguar, the art of performance.